Yay! Please stay tuned and stick around if you guys want to learn how to solve this kind of program. Not even a few minutes ago how I solved this problem and now you guys want to learn a little bit about how to solve problems like this. So first off, my name is Carla Mayho and the point of this video is to show you guys how to program a carpet cost calculator using Java programming. I'm going to start off by reading the question, explaining a little bit about the logic, and then we are going to code it on the right side. And then, as you guys saw a few seconds ago, you're going to see that what we coded was actually going to work and be correct in terms of the Udemy test checker, if you will. So let's start off by reading the question. The carpet company has asked... The carpet company has asked you to write an application that calculates the price of carpeting for rectangular rooms. To calculate the price, you multiply the area of the floor, width times length, by the price per square meter of carpet. For example, the area of the floor that is 12 meters long and 10 meters wide is 120 square meters. To cover the floor with a carpet, that costs $8 per square meter. would cost 960. Write a class with the name floor. The class needs two fields, instant variables, with the name width and the length of type double. The class needs to have one constructor with parameters width and length of type double, and it needs to initialize the field. In case the width parameter is less than zero, it needs to set the width value to zero. In the case the length parameter is less than zero, it needs to set the length value to zero. Write the following methods. Instant methods. Method named get area without any parameters. It needs to return the calculated area with dot length. I'm excuse me, with times length. And then we have a second class we have to make called carpet. The class needs one field instance variable with name cost of type double. The class needs to have one constructor with parameter cost of type double and it needs to initialize the field. In case the cost parameter is less than zero, it needs to set the cost field value to zero. Write the following methods instant methods method name get cost without parameter it needs to return the value of the cost field and then we have one more class which is write a class with the name calculator the class needs two fields instant variables with name floor of type floor and carpet of type carpet the class needs to have one constructor with parameters for of type 4 and carpet of type carpet needs to initialize this field. Write the following method, instant methods, method get, named get total cost without any parameters needs to return the calculated total cost to cover the floor with the carpet. And then we can scroll down a little bit further and we can see some test code that Udemy has provided for us. You can also see over here on the right hand side, I've already put it into IntelliJ. If you guys want to see how a class is created, go ahead and leave it in the comments below. But I'm pretty sure you guys know the basics of setting up a class and writing a program. But again, if you don't, don't hesitate to leave any comments questions down below. And don't forget to hit a like, of course, once you guys see that this actually works. And then it also shows us an output of an output 
what our test output should be, and that all our methods should be defined as public, not public static. In total, we have to write three classes. They, we have to make sure each class has its own file, and don't add the main method to the solutions. When it says see the tabs on the left, if you guys didn't quite understand how it happened at the beginning, it basically means that every one of these tabs we're going to put a separate class that we have that Udemy is going to test and check against all the possibilities that you can think of or been programmed to think of to make sure that our code works correctly. So we're going to start off with, of course, the Fura class. So, we have to write two variables with and length of type double. As we know, when it comes to classes, all of our instant variables should be private. So, we're going to do that. We're going to make private double with and private double length. Okay, now it says the class needs to have one constructor with parameters with and length of type double and it needs to initialize these fields. We've talked about this before of how to make a constructor, so it's going to be the same name as the class. We're going to pass the parameters of width. Okay, now we have to formulate it to handle the conditions that I want it to handle. And in short terms, without me reading it, it's basically saying if width is less than zero, then we need to set width equal to zero. And if length is less than zero, we need to set length to zero. So yeah, there's a few ways to do this. I'm going to do this how I showed you guys before using an if else statement. So if width is less than zero, then length is greater than zero. We're going to start with to zero, and we're going to set length to length. If you guys are wondering kind of what these are, are called, they're kind of, they're called conditional statements. So we're telling the computer what to do based on what information the computer receives. So if width is greater than zero and length is less than zero, then it's going to be the opposite. We're going to set this width, which I can actually copy and paste this, just to save a little bit of time for us here. So we're going to set width to width, and we're going to set length to zero. Um, another condition would be if width and length are both less than zero. So if width is less than zero and the length is less than zero, both of them will be set equal to zero. And then we have the last part of the condition, which is of course if both of them are greater than zero which would just be the else part and they would just both equal the given values that were passed. Okay, now we have the constructor for four done. We have the variable set up and now we have one more thing. We have to create the get area method without parameters. 
So let me just make sure I'm outside of the scope of the constructor. So it would be public. And we return the type double. So get area with no parameter. Like it says, which in order for this to work, that would mean it's going to pull the length and the width from. the class itself, so it would be this dot width times this dot length. Okay, so it looks like we have everything for the floor class. Again, don't hesitate to leave any comments down below if you guys have any questions or you're confused about anything. I do reply to comments as fast as I can. The more complicated ones may take me a little bit longer just to make sure I can explain it in a way for you guys to fully understand. So now that we're done with the floor class, we're going to move on to the carpet class. And I already have this class set up here with the comments on lines 4, 7, and 10. So let's start off with the variables. So we already have a class named carpet. We need to have one instance variable name cost of type double so let's do that okay now they want us to have one constructor that passes the parameters of cost right which is similar to floor again you could copy and paste it but it's really easy you don't really need to do that so and also, you can always have these variables be different names in terms of what pass on line 8 to set it equal to. You guys can go ahead and test that if you like. So, initialize the field. In the case that the cost parameter is less than 0, it needs to set the cost value equal to 0. So again, this is similar to 4, except we're only dealing with one variable. So if cost is less than zero, we're going to set this cost to zero. Otherwise, we're going to set this cost to the value of cost. Okay, so now we have the constructor ready. Now we have to get to the last part, which is class, excuse me, the instant method, and as we can see, IntelliJ is helping us out with this getter, so we can just use it from there, and you can see it would be the same thing as what we would have typed in anyway, all we're doing is returning the cost that was given to us. But to be more accurate, we can call it this cost, so return this cost. So let's see, now it's the cost that's coming from the carpet class. And last but not least, we're going to do the calculator class. The calculator class has two instance variables as well. We have of type floor and of type carpet. So they're going to be private cells. Okay, so now that we have all that, now they say we need one constructor, right, that's going to pass the parameters. So like we've been doing, except this one's called public calculator. Put the parameters of four. And here I'm going to show you, it doesn't have to be four four. We're just going to do four F and carpet C. Okay. And we have to initialize this field. So to initialize it, do this. Dot four equals 
to F. And this dot the carpet. We'll see. Okay. So now that we've initialized the floor and the carpet, we only have one more thing left to do, which is to get the total cost without any parameters. I'm gonna go down here. Public. Double. Get. Here, this is where all the classes are going to come together. And to get the total class that covers the floor with the carpet, it would be you'd have to call the floor class. So you would type floor.getArea times carpet.getCost. And it will return the total cost of getting your carpet clean. So now let's run. We can see all the errors have went away in the main method. Uh, just to show you guys, it'll be exactly the same. I'm going to comment out the hello world line. I like to do that sometimes to show that the main method is actually working before I start calling the consecutive classes. So let's go ahead and run this. See if we get the same output as Udemy did. Fingers crossed. All right. Yay. You know, go ahead and like, subscribe, share the video. We got it to work. So now I'm going to put it back, so to speak, into the Udemy tester to show you guys that our code is good against all the test code that Udemy has came up with. And we can get that to go on the first try with no errors. You guys have to leave a like. We all know how hard it is to code sometimes. All the trial, all the error, all the hard work. Give you guys a round of applause for completing the program along with this video. And again, if you guys have any questions, please don't hesitate to leave them in the comments down below. I'm here to help you guys. Okay, now we're gonna copy calculator here. Nice. Okay, now let's check the solutions. Dun dun. Okay, we got some errors. Oh, I got some. Some little errors. Oh, okay. So for my calculator one, one of my comment lines didn't go through. So if you didn't copy it, let's fix that one. Oh, and that was it. So there it is, you guys. I want to thank you guys for getting this far in the video. I want to thank you guys for taking the time to watch. Again, if you guys have any programming ideas, any questions, don't hesitate to leave it in the comments below. And I'll cope with you guys next time. Bye!